Hey guys, I just want to show off my Advanced Additive Scenes plugin here on the default uh, Angry Bots 4.0 Unity demo. This is the same demo that ships with Unity. The only thing I've done here is that I've switched it over to text serialization, or sorry, so under um, editor, uh, I've done forced text here so that the scenes get saved out as text, and I'll show you why I did that in a second here. Um, first thing I want to say about this project is that it has a great organization here. So in the hierarchy window, they've split everything up into uh, different game objects. So the different um, sort of categories of game objects that you have in the scene live under their own game object in the hierarchy. Um, I'm going to get to why that's important in a bit, but first I just want to show you what uh, advanced additive scenes can help you solve and additive scenes in general kind of help you solve. Uh, additive scenes are a built-in Unity thing, and Advanced Additive Scenes is a plugin that lets you work with those additive scenes in a much more seamless fashion. So if I were to just look at all the cubes in the scene, oops, cube, uh, I grab a bunch of these and highlight them all. Now these are used just for collisions around the scene. They're, uh, none of these are actually used to, um, for like rendering purposes. So you'll never just see like a cube laying around in the scene. They're just sort of there to make sure the player can't get anywhere. So what I'm gonna do here is remove the mesh render and the mesh cube filter. And then I'm gonna save this scene as angry bots, no cubes. And that's my plugin, um, just kind of warning us about something that I'll get to later. And uh, now you see we have two files here. So if I were to actually um, look at the differences between these two files, uh, this is beyond compare. It's a super cool um, comparison utility that shows you what the differences are in a much more um, kind of easy to grasp fashion and it's good for merging. But uh, here on the uh, left hand side is the no cubes um, version and then on the right hand side is the initial version. And what you can see here is that it's not just data being removed from the scene. Instead you'll see that there's a bunch of like IDs and bookkeeping that um, are changing between the two versions. Uh, it's stuff like this that makes merging these two scenes basically impossible. So uh, if you're doing changes like this, any other change that someone else would submit would cause what what's uh, sorry would cause what's called a uh, merge conflict. So that's the reason why um, you know people have a hard time working in in Unity. Uh, people will typically set up a uh, Dropbox where multiple people can. Uh, use the scene at the same time, but then if you, they're not careful and two people make changes to the scene, um, their changes will get lost. And if they try to merge them together automatically using typical merge tools like in Git or like in Subversion or Perforce, um, you'll end up with a merge conflict because it doesn't know how to handle um, the scene or the data. So uh, how do you solve that? Well, that's what ad additive scenes can solve. So um, if the data in these game objects here, like enemies, uh, dynamic, semi-static, if they were to all live in separate scenes, then anyone could edit those scenes at the same time and they would all get merged into this uh, main scene here. So for instance, um, only a game designer usually places enemies, so all these enemies in here. Uh, that's up to the game designer's responsibility and typically they will only be maybe one or so on a team uh, who's assigned to a level. So it's up to the game designer to place all those enemies. Uh, going down the list, it'll be up to like a sound designer to place all the sounds. It'll be up to a environment artist to place all of these static objects. So the idea is to get those into separate scenes, uh, which can be done you know, manually in Unity, or you can use uh, my plugin, and my plugin has a few advantages. And I'm just going to go through the process of um, breaking up the scene using my plugin right now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the enemy's object and just say I want to create a subscene. And over here on the inspector window, I'm just going to hit create. Uh, I like to organize my stuff, so I'm going to create a new folder here called subscenes. And in here, I'm going to call it enemies. I'm going to do the same thing with, uh, just as an example, semi-static. Great. Uh, scenes, subscenes, semi-static. And again for sounds. Scenes, subscenes, sounds. And I'm going to name these ones so they're, they're easy to see again. Enemies and semi-static. And so under these game objects, you're going to see that um, those were the initial ones that we had in there to begin with. So this was the initial enemies, the initials, environment, and the initial sounds. So now if I were to save this little scene, it saved this scene, but it also saved all of the uh, additive scenes or the sub scenes that I just created. So again, if I go to my uh, project folder here and I look, I can see that there's different, um, different files here. And if I were to explore to those files, you can see that they have some data in them. So that's the that's basically the data that was uh, taken out of the main scene and put into those scenes. So if I went to the main assets folder, I would see that this no cubes file is significantly smaller than the angry bots file that we initially started with because that data now lives in those sub scenes. So that's a good way of sort of uh, ensuring that different artists um, can work on the same scene at the same time. Anytime they change something in this scene here, for instance, the semi-static scene, uh, what's a good example here? Uh, these doors, for instance, uh, if I move this and then I were to save this, uh, that data actually lives in the semi-static file as opposed to the main scene. So again, uh, multiple people can sort of work on the same logical scene uh, without trumping each other's data because all of that data is going to be stored elsewhere. Uh, in the next example, I'm going to go through the rest of breaking up this scene because there's a few uh, gotchas. If you're just installing the plugin uh, for the first time and you're breaking up a scene like this that already exists and already has data references, there's a few gotchas that you might run into and I'll cover them in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.